last time we went over the succession of stages in the Paticca Samuppada, dependent arising. This is called the descending phase, and it consists of the stages of becoming, moving into the world. Then, once the path begins, this is called the ascending stage. And this whole figure is the forward direction of the Paticca Samuppada. Namaste. Today we're going to look into the backward direction of Paticca Samuppada. The Paticca Samuppada was discovered not by our Gautama Buddha, but by a previous Buddha, Buddha Vipassi. And the Gautama Buddha gives him full credit, which I think is a wonderful thing. Let's read from the Sutta where Buddha describes this discovery. Then, as Vipassi, the one intent on awakening, was in private retreat, this thought came to his mind. Alas, this world has fallen into trouble. It's born, grows old, dies, passes away, and is reborn. Yet it doesn't understand how to escape from this suffering, from old age and death. Oh, when will an escape be found from this suffering, from old age and death? So this is an example of what we call sitting in the question. That when you have a difficult question, a, a global question of cosmic scope, <laughs> it seems impossible how to come up with the answer. Just sit in the question and the answer will come. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their old age and death? What is a condition for old age and death? Then, through radical attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom. When rebirth exists, there's old age and death. Rebirth is a condition for old age and death. So, in other words, the cause or the condition for the arising of death is birth. You can't die if you're not born. So all you have to do to stop the suffering of old age and death is to avoid birth. So then he doesn't stop there, he goes on. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their becoming, what is a condition for becoming? Then, through radical attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when grasping exists, there's becoming. Grasping is a condition for becoming. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their grasping, what is a condition for grasping? Then, through radical attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom. When craving exists, there's grasping. Craving is a condition for grasping. Buddha Vipassi was working backwards through the chain of cause and effect and discovered one by one the stages of dependent origination. So in other words, because there's death, there must be a cause. There must be a single thing which, not being, death would also uh, cease, and that's birth. And then what is the one thing that causes birth? It's becoming. And what is the one thing that causes becoming? Craving. Uh, and then so on, back through the chain, and what is the one thing that causes becoming? Grasping. What causes grasping? Craving. What causes craving? 
feeling. What causes feeling? Contact. What causes contact? The six senses. What causes the six senses? Name and form. What causes name and form? Consciousness. What causes consciousness? Sankara. And what causes Sankara? Ignorance. And so the whole descending chain of cause and effect was discovered by Vipassi in the backwards order. So this is extremely significant. Only a Buddha, only someone who's perfectly enlightened could discover this because he is the only one who has completely unconditioned attention, radical attention. Yoniso Manasikara. We talked about this before in the early series on matrix learning because Yoniso means a matrix. It means the origin. So radical attention looks at a phenomenon with the intent to discover its origin, its cause. And by knowing the cause and eliminating it, you also eliminate the phenomenon. That's the principle of Ida Pachayata that we discussed in the last uh, episode. But just to review, Ida Pachayata means thus this being, this comes to be. With the arising of this, this arises. This not being, this does not come to be. With the cessation of this, this ceases. So the forward direction of Paticca Samuppada is that with ignorance as a condition, Sankara arise. With Sankara as a condition, consciousness arises. With consciousness as a condition, name and form arises. With name and form as a condition, the six senses arise. With the six senses as a condition, contact arises. And with contact as a condition, feeling arises. With feeling as a condition, craving arises. With craving as a condition, grasping arises. With grasping as a condition, becoming arises. And with becoming as a condition, birth arises. With birth as a condition, arises old age, decay, death, lamentation, suffering, and all kinds of miseries that we experience in this world. So, this also points the way to extinguishing this suffering. Because if ignorance fades away, as the Buddha puts it, with the complete fading away and annihilation of ignorance, then sankara, also do not arise. With the cessation of sankhara, consciousness does not arise. With the cessation of consciousness, name and form does not arise. With the cessation of name and form, six senses do not arise. With the cessation of six senses, contact does not arise. With the cessation of contact, feeling does not arise. With the cessation of feeling, cessation of craving. Cessation of craving gives cessation of grasping. Cessation of grasping leads to cessation of becoming. Cessation of becoming causes cessation of birth. And cessation of birth causes the fading away and complete destruction of old age, decay, death, suffering, lamentation, and so on. So this is the primal process of becoming. This is how existence comes to be. As we went over in the intro to the previous episode, from galaxies down to subatomic particles, huh? everything is a vortex. And the vortex goes through these clear stages in every single case, at every scale at every time length. Huh? It's not, as the classical commentators on the Buddha's teaching try to assert, it's not that 
Paticca Samuppada applies only to human birth and only to the previous life, this life, and the next life. No. It applies at all scales. Buddha never specified a scope for Paticca Samuppada, and that's because it's universal. From the biggest of the big to the smallest of the small, anything with form, anything that has being, existence, anything that comes into existence, comes into existence through this process. And anything that ceases to exist, ceases through the same process. So, now we have the descending leg or side of Paticca Samuppada, both in the forward direction and in the backward direction, both in the arising mode and in the ceasing mode. Now, these are all meditations. Uh, e actually, everything we go over in these videos is a, uh, a seed for meditation. So if we talk about name and form and consciousness and, and like, or vortex or, or anything that we talk about, this is something to look for in your own experience. It's not just a theory. It's visible here and now. Huh? Ehi pasiko. Come and see. If you look for it, you'll find it. This is the special quality of the Buddha's teaching. It's verifiable in the here and now. So, I encourage you to take this uh, descending leg of Paticca Samuppada. Look over it. If necessary, go back and watch some of our early videos where we explain these terms in more detail. And try to understand, try to look in your own life and see how, for example, because of ignorance, one develops a delusion that one can have a certain desire and enjoy it. In that way, a sankara is born. Uh, an antic commitment. I am going to be the enjoyer. <laughs> and then that creates a certain kind of consciousness. Uh, I am the enjoyer of this thing, whatever it is. And so, of course, now there's name and form attached to that desire. Uh, I, <laughs> the being who will enjoy, <laughs> has this certain name, the enjoyer, <laughs> and this certain form. And that gives rise to the senses. I'm going to enjoy this thing through sight, through hearing, through smell, through taste, through touch, or through the mind. And then, of course, that gives rise to contact of the senses with their objects. And then, once that happens, we have feelings about it. Oh, I like that. Oh, I didn't like that. Eh, I don't really care one way or the other. <laughs> There's feeling. And then, when we experience some feeling, either positive or negative, we develop a craving. Oh, I want to experience that again. Or, no, I don't want to experience that again. That's craving. And because of that, there's grasping. Huh? One becomes attached to a certain experience or ending a certain experience. This is the process of becoming. Huh? So one develops a form and is born into that form. Huh? It's just like exercise. If you go to the gym and lift weights, huh, you get born into a muscular body. If you don't, then, you know, you stay out of shape. <laughs> but either way, it sets the stage for old age, disease, and death. That what has a beginning also has an end. Whatever is born is also going to die. So this is the whole chain of cause and effect leading to suffering in material world and in becoming and existence. And through unraveling this chain of cause and effect, the whole thing can be made to cease. And this is the secret of the Buddha's teaching. Buddha Saranaya.